Hi, and welcome to Aussie Kicks. On today's show, well, 2023 is almost over. Another year zooms past in the blink of an eye. Now, I'm not sure how long I've been doing the channel now, but I'm pretty sure it's four plus years. And uh, full time, it's been about two and a half, three years, I think. Something like that, or maybe a little bit longer. But I'm not going to look into it because I don't really want to know. <laughs> so in this episode, the plan is to look back at every single car that's joined the RC Kicks collection in 2023. And I've just totted them up and there's over 30 cars. Now, I can't go through every car in the collection as the, this video would be like four hours long. So I did a video about a year ago, I think it was, where I covered pretty much all the cars I had then. And I think that video was nearly two hours long anyway. So if you're new to the channel and you want to see the whole collection, I recommend going and seeing that video first. I'll put a link up here. That will take you up to last year, and this video will cover all the new cars that have come in 2023. Now, obviously, every car that you're going to see in this video has been on the show. So if there's a car that you want to see the build video of or more information about that car, all you've got to do inside YouTube is put the name of the car in the search bar, do a space and put RC Kicks, and then it will jump straight to those videos. So that's the easiest way to find the videos in the channel for a specific car if that makes any sense and because we've got 760 videos now something like that so obviously trying to find a car can be a real challenge so that's the little trick for you put the name of the car and then just put rc kicks or put any subject you want space with rc kicks and it will find it if you want to see beginner stuff if you want to see things about chargers cars um builds just put the name of whatever it is space rc kicks and it, uh, youtube will show it to you that's the easiest way to jump around the channel now that we've got so so many videos right i think that covers all of it so let's jump into the first car so we kick off with two of my favorites and that's this the classic british mini both from tamia the first one we're going to look at is this the 94 monte carlo now this is on an m-01 chassis this came out way back on the 5th of the 10th 1995 under kit 58163 now the one i've got here is an original m01 chassis in lovely condition i think i got that from andy robinson uh from andy robinson rc so he did me a great favor now this one has been upgraded it's got oil shocks from tamia on it and a few other metal upgrade parts in the steering but it's in a beautiful condition now i bought the chassis from him but the body i got separate now there was a reproduction version of this that came on the 19th of january 2011 so i think that's when this body was produced it wasn't an original one the thing with these minis which is a real shame is if you drive them the minute you smack the front out at all it just destroys the front of these so to get a totally original one all the way back from 1995 in mint condition is almost impossible this is actually quite a difficult one to do yourself anyway as finding a new in box mini body set all the way back from 2011 is still pretty difficult and prices are quite expensive but i was lucky enough to get one so i could actually put this homage together now it also comes with all original electronics as well mechanical speed controller i've even put a vintage battery in this one so this one is in lovely condition super tough to have it in the collection and it's just stunning it's basically a model that you can drive if you want to now the other one that i've got here this is a mini cooper racing now this was reproduced quite a few times this one is kit 58438 now this came out on the 15th of july 2009 and there's been a few variants of them in different colors there's a blue one a green one and a red one but they're all pretty much the same now you would be mistaken in thinking that this body is exactly the same as this body but for some reason tamia changed it the whole front end is actually different on this one the whole front is polycarbonate whereas on this one you attach the grill which i've got a spare one here is an actual bolt on par so i think think but could be wrong that this was the original sort of design and then they made it easier and cheaper but they both look brilliant just in very different ways and being that they've done them in the box art red they are different reds as well so they are very different and they give off different vibes this one is an mo5 
2009, like I said, pretty much exactly stock. The, the only thing I'm actually changing right this second is I'm a big fan of the original chrome rims from the M01 and I bought some to go on this one. As for some weird reason, Tamiya did them with gray rims and they're not as nice. Also, I think the changing the tires as well, they seem a bit bigger on this one, where they're a bit more scale on the other one. So I'm gonna change that around and basically have the same wheels that I've got on the M01. So that's the first cars that I got in over 2023. Let's move on to the next one. Next, we have one that's come to the collection. It's been on the show, but I haven't actually done much to it. I've done a few tweaks off camera, but I did actually show it when it first arrived. Now, this was gifted to RC Kicks from Kevin. It is something that's really, really rare and very different, but perfect to go into my RC10 collection. Basically, it's an RC10 that's had a Tekken total chassis swap. So you could, back in the day, pick up this, which was the chassis for it. Now, it wasn't just a chassis plate and that was it. It's got a whole rear suspension, which is amazing. And it is a real kind of time capsule of a modification that was done back in the day. And it's in beautiful condition. And I'm so chuffed to have this one in the collection because it is just so different and very rare as well. Now it's obviously not running the RC10 body, <laughs> but it's gorgeous and it's got all vintage electronics in it. The only thing that I've done so far since it's arrived is I've put new hubs on it. I think it's got new rear hubs. I've done those myself, but I think the front ones came with it. I can't remember, but also I bought the adapters from JC Racing to put the Yokomo connectors on it just to make it a bit different. Uh, some things I want to do to the kit, and I probably will change the shocks. They need to be upgraded to mint ones. I'm pretty sure LNL models are actually doing reproduction ones, so I might have to hit them up, see if I can get a set off him, because these ones are just showing a little bit of wear, and obviously I want to bring this up to be a total shelf queen. But it is a fascinating chassis swap and a real time capsule. Super chuffed, and a massive thank you for Kevin for sending this over. But because I haven't done any real work on it, it hasn't been back on the show for a full rebuild doesn't really need it it's in pretty decent condition as it is whether i'll end up painting up another body maybe this one is in pretty decent condition i might be able to do a refresh um, because you can get these bodies uh, anyway. So there you go, something a little bit different. Another one that's played a big part on the show over the recent months on RC Kicks is this. This is the Kyosho Ultima JJ. Now I've decided to do something a bit stupid and instead of actually putting all modern electronics and running this, like a lot of people have, and I have to say this goes around a track way better than you expect if you put modern electronics in it. Anyway, I decided to go for a out and out replica of the original one which is what I've been doing over the last few months. Now since you've last seen this on the show I've managed to scramble together a few more parts. I now have the correct tyres that are an absolute nightmare to get hold of. These came from Germany and luckily I had someone that watches the show who could sort them out and get them over to me as the company that sold them doesn't want to sell them to the UK. The suspension is now the correct vintage suspension on it. Also the receiver is now the exact receiver. That came all all the way from America as well. Now, the only thing I'm waiting on now is to receive the correct ESC. Now, apparently I'm supposed to be getting one of those, but I'm not sure when it's gonna arrive. I also have the correct servo now, which is exactly the one that was in the car originally. That also came all the way over from America. This car basically sums up everything that you guys can put together. Everything on this car has basically come from viewers who have contacted me and said, hey, I've got that, as trying to hunt down the exact correct parts is almost impossible. So they've come from far and wide and it's all come together. So a massive thank you to everybody who watches the show that's helped make this one possible. I want to get better rear suspension on this one. Also the uprights to try and get some uh, uprights made in the color that the original was. Also they've aged a bit, so that makes it a bit more difficult. So I need to try and find some Vera board, I think it is, and have them made, but find some old board that's about the same sort of color. Now there is some lovely reference images of this car that was restored, the original. 
was restored so I've been using that a lot so it's getting really close another thing that I've just done which isn't really following the replica side of it is I picked up the Kyosho chassis protector that celebrates this car and I fitted that and I modified it as well to have the little parts that you're supposed to take those bits out but I cut them down and stuck them in um, so I fitted that which is really nice so really this is 100% shelf queen I don't even know if the electronics will work even if I put a battery in that maybe I'll try it once I get the ESC but we're getting really close now to it being finished but uh, I love this car it's absolutely beautiful but I'm surprised how well it performs if you put modern electronics in it that's for sure now another two cars that joined us in 2023 that I still have is these, the Traxxas Slash. Now there's two of them. Yeah, I know I've only got one here. The other's buried deep in, <laughs> in the storage room and I just couldn't face digging it out and spending 20 minutes just to have it here. But we compared the two. One was the top of the range four wheel drive Ultimate and this was the entry level one, the two wheel drive brushed version. Then we took this one and we upgraded it and put loads of new Traxxas upgrades on this. Arms, brushless, full electronics drive shafts all kind of manner of things just to bring this one up and then we compared them uh, on the show these were very popular and a lot of you really like these and I must admit so do I that's why I still have them now I do plan to bring this one back on the show again because there is an upgraded um, diff for this so I'm tempted to get the new gearbox and then it will come on and we'll do a comparison between the gearbox that's in it now and the new one but it's about 120 quid so at some point I will buy that and fit that into this one and then this one is pretty much finished the only thing that I've done off camera since this last time this was on is I fitted a uh, chassis protector to it which kind of matches the color of the car but I really like this one. Now I do plan on taking this one to the skate park and giving it a bit of a bash at some point. So when it comes back on the show, when we do the gearbox change, we'll probably take it for a bit of a bash as well. This color scheme is one of my favorites, but it's also taken quite a bit of uh, damage because the brushless system in this is insanely fast, way too fast for this car. It will backflip while you're going along. If you floor it, it will just backflip on you straight away. So it's really powerful, but rugged, super strong, and I absolutely love them. And comparing this one to the one that I had on recently, if you got this in its bare bones form, yes, it was twice the price, but it's more than twice the car, that's for sure. Next on the list is this, the Egress Black, and it pretty much dropped almost a year to date. It came out on the 24th of December, 2022, under kit 47489. Now, the car itself is gorgeous, and it's a real icon for Tamiya. The main issue with this one was Tamiya really did overreach on their prices. I went back and I checked the original price that this car came out at and it was RRP was $599.99 and it was up for sale at $519.99. Yes, over £500 for the Egress Black. And it was controversial because you basically didn't get anything different it didn't come with a motor it didn't have any upgrades or anything like that it was carbon all through and then they did things like changing the shocks but that seemed really expensive because it kind of sold along the lines of the Avanti Black but that came with upgrades as well and a motor so it just felt really expensive and a year on we can honestly say yes it was too much they're still available today and i had a look just now at what i could buy one of these for and currently the cheapest i could find was 379 pound yeah that's 140 pound less than when they first brought this out yeah they definitely overreached on that one but also what's made it more difficult for this is they've just announced that they're bringing out the standard color one which a lot of you really like this is actually a vintage one but it will look identical apart from the shocks and the end uh turnbuckles anyway that one is currently up for £499, which is still a £100 less than what this one was up for sale a year ago. So it looks like they may have realised that they just pushed themselves way too far and people have just said, no, that's, that's enough. And being that there's so many of these still available a year later, obviously it didn't sell out massively either. So I think that was a really good decision. A lot of you gave me feedback as well saying, yeah, that's just gone too far. So, you know, 
I think that's where they found their boundary of how much they can continually increase the kits to get more and more money for selling basically the same stuff. Now, currently today, if you're in the market for one, I would get one of these. Uh, because you can actually change the body, it's not come pre-painted for you, like mine's gunmetal gray, you can paint it yourself. The only real difference is the shot colors and the decal sheet. But you can buy the decal sheet, do any color you like, and still pay way less at 379 than that when it re gets re-released at 500. So again, makes no sense. And when these come out, I'm pretty sure that they're gonna drop fast too. So if you're in the market for one of these, get the egress black and then change it yourself, or just wait. And I think the re-release of the standard kit will just come down, just give it time. Anyway, that is another one. And I have to say, Tamiya, they did a fantastic job of the coloring of the shocks. This gold, it's like matte gold is absolutely stunning. All right, what's next? Next is one that's been on the show quite recently. So we'll just go over it briefly and move on as times are ticking. And that's this, the Schumacher Racing SV2. Now I've basically given it a good clean over, replaced a few bits and pieces, changed the chassis on it and uh, fitted a body and an under tray. Now I've painted up the under tray, that's all done. Put new rims and tires on it. I've still got to pick up some new front tires of Vinny this Friday and then that's that pretty much done. The body needs to be painted but I spoke to a pro painter and hopefully he's going to give me the green light of when I can actually send it to him so that he can paint up the top for me as it's white with a Union Jack over the top and that's a little bit out of my skill set. But I painted up the bottom white one obviously that's nice and easy so it's basically waiting for that and then maybe some period correct electronics before going onto the shelf. Beautiful car, super chuffed to get it. I am trying to collect this kind of era now, but prices have started to go up a little bit as well. And to find really nice condition ones is a little bit difficult. Another car that's been a bit of a surprise in 2023 is this from Malalo. Now there's two versions that came out. There was a previous version, which is the AK917 speed run car. And then they brought this out, which is the AK787. Now this is a better car. Well, I find it much easier to drive. Now I've got Got two versions this is the entry level one and I've got the top of the range one as well now you can run two motors in these but this one actually drives really well you you don't have to do speed running to have this car and drive it around the car park or take it to the track this you could actually dial this in to run it around a track with not too much of an issue maybe an ESC change and a servo change but the car itself can handle really well and obviously wheels and tires but look wise this is a better one as well i think this looks a bit more scale it's not quite right being that the sides are too deep but it's much closer than the old one but then the other one i like that as well i just found it a lot more skittish than this one but i'm not quite sure what they did differently for this one to that one but this one feels much more planted so i don't know if it's just the setup is more precise on this versus the old one but being that these are 199 dollars <laughs> that is a bargain for a ready to run so what we'll see in 2024 from Lalo, well, we'll just have to wait and see, but I keep seeing good things from them and they are progressing. Every release they do is better and better. And that's what we really want to see from a company as they learn what works and what doesn't work. Next is this, uh, not the body. The body doesn't come with this car. It is the most expensive budget entry level Tamiya kit you can find. Yes, that's right. This is the TTO2 SRX, the most expensive budget chassis you can buy from Tamiya. Yeah, and it doesn't even come with the body. This is a Tamiya body that I picked up. This will obviously re-release the Ford Focus RS, and then I picked up the decals aftermarket. Some things that have been done to this car off camera, as far as I can remember, is it now has upgraded rims with the ventilated air discs, whatever you call them on the front. And I've also put a chassis skin on the bottom. Now I don't plan on driving this one. I did for a while, I'm knowing about whether I should actually take this one and drive it, but I wanna keep one Shelf Queen TTO2 in the collection. I mean, I've had hundreds of them, but really I wanted to just keep the best one. Now, if it turns out that Tamiya do a final top of the range one, then I'll probably end up getting that. And then I'll, maybe I'll drive this, I honestly don't know. The biggest difference with this one, the TTO2, is all the arms that were uh, fitted to this car. Obviously didn't come with the TTO2, there was an upgrade that they did for for the SRX. So it's supposed to be a really good driving car. 
but I kind of like to have just the top of the range TTO2 in the collection as eventually, hopefully they will discontinue it and that'll be the end of it. So it'd be nice to have that. But that's just my own personal opinion. You could argue that that is insane. <laughs> it is a little bit, isn't it? But I wanted to have one. And a lot of you think that I hate the TTO2, and I don't, I just think that they've done it to death and it's time to move on. But there you go, so that's my Ford Focus TTO2 SRX. Oh, one upgrade I want to do to it that should have been in the kit, and that was the steering should have been alloy from Tamiya. Now, Tamiya do do a alloy bridge and steering mechanism, steering arms for this, but you've got to buy them in separate parts of two, and that gets really expensive, but it should have had it in the kit, so I will add that as well. Apart from that, pretty much done unless I can f I find a different kind of rally body that comes out down the line that I like more, then maybe I'll swap it out for this one. But for now, it goes back on the shelf. Now we move on to Schumacher Racing, and that's the XLS and ProCat. Well, I lump them together just to keep things moving. And before you comment below, yes, but the XLS was discontinued. It hasn't been out in 2023. It's an ongoing process, this one. Now, it has been on the show in the 2023. I put the ProCat rear end on the XLS. It doesn't make much sense. Just go with it. This one's a bit of a pet project for myself, as I am a massive fan of the short wheel base cat and these I remember these back in the day when I used to go racing and I could never get one so I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with these but the styling on them is absolutely beautiful so this one is really mine and I've been messing around with it and it's been on the show a few times and obviously the last thing I did was I put the pro cat rear end on it which doesn't really make much sense but I'm just tinkering and this is what makes me really happy but you can pick up this, that's the ProCat. This is still for sale right now. This you can pick up for £279 and it's kit K193. Now the only changes I've done to this is I've changed the rims. I went for JC Racing rims front and rear. Apart from that, it's totally stock and that is box art. Whereas the XLS, well, it has basically every upgrade possible. Another thing that I've done on this in 2023 is I've done one-way drive shafts in the front. Apart from that, it's on my uh, shelf of shame and at some point it will be back on the show to finish off that body. Now the reason I haven't is I've painted up a few of these bodies in the past and they're not as easy as they look and that rear spoiler is incredibly difficult to paint well. It's a bit like the Phantom suffers from the problem of the very thin ends. Getting paint in there is really difficult. So it's put me off painting it up, but I love the box art of this one. So I will do this box art at some point. I just haven't got around to it yet, but it's all full carbon front and rear. And <laughs> everywhere you look, there's an upgrade on this one. And this is definitely one for me. Next up is a truck that is absolutely gorgeous. I really love the body set on this one. And it's this, the Rock Soccer. Now this is the CR-01. This came out on the 1st of May, 2014. You can still buy it today. It's very easy to come by. 270 pound will buy you the kit. The, for me, it's all about looks with this one. I love the body, the graphics. I like the gunmetal gray, really nice. I put a bit more effort into this one. So I've done all the anti-roll bars in red paint instead of using stickers. And then the bed is all black. So painting this up looks very simple, but it actually takes a bit of effort. Uh, the, putting the stickers on is not that difficult, but I do like the whole kind of like digital camo look about it. The thing that drew me to it the most was the kind of strange suspension it's got where the springs are separate. It is a little bit of slop in the suspension, but it is kind of quite novel. But for me, it's all about looks. It's very American. I love the style. I love what they did with the graphics. Now I have got quite a few really good crawlers and trail trucks. So this one just doesn't really get used. It kind of just sits on the shelf looking really nice. Next, we have one of the cars that I absolutely adore and it's this. Well, in the last year, I've actually had two of them. First, I built the stock one, which was the Phantom CRC2, which was K.30637B. Yeah, what a mouthful. Uh, currently, you can still buy those. They're £249, and it's the yellow version, which is like the standard one. Now, Kyosho had their 60th anniversary, and then they brought out this. So I sold on my standard one, as I couldn't really justify having both of them, especially as I've got a normal Phantom. And I sold that on to Jonas, 
Christmas and it went off to a new home. So I have this one. Now this one is the 60th anniversary one and you can't get these anymore. They're already sold out. So this is the kind of the collector's one, if you will. I couldn't see you ever wanting to really drive this because underneath it's absolutely beautiful. Now it has got the carbon chassis upgrade that I fitted to it and it has every bell and whistle you can get from it. I fitted that didn't come with it. I modified the body a little bit and had it so that you could see through to the, the gold shock underneath. And this one took me ages to paint up and it's well worth going and checking out. It was a very popular video, but it's absolutely stunning. But to all those people that say, I just have shelf queens, and I don't, I actually do have cars that I run, but they're cars that are for running and I have other cars that are my shelf queens. This is the one I actually run as driving these is absolutely gorgeous. So this one gets a run out every now and again when I get access to a track. And these are real fun to drive. I love them, they're brilliant fun. This one is looking a bit worse for wear because obviously my driving is not brilliant. But at some point I will retire this one off. I have another body and original decals to turn this back into a shelf queen. And that's what's gonna happen. But there you go, that's another car that we had on the show twice in 2023. If I could just ask you to take two seconds if you've watched the videos and you've watched a few and you enjoy it to hit that subscribe button. 58.6% of you that watch the channel aren't even subscribed. It costs you absolutely nothing. And being that we're such a small RC channel, every new subscriber really helps the algorithm find our content and push it out to more RC fans like you. Next is three buggies that have played quite a big part in 2023 and RC Kicks. Well, two of them have. One of them's very new and only just been on the show. And that's these. Basically, you've got the Kyosho Dirt Master, which was an RB5, I think it was, or RB6. I can never remember which one it is. I think it's an RB5. Then you've got the GeForce Genova. And now you've got the PR Racing S1RM. Now, these are retro style i don't even know we need to come up with a proper name for these they're like retro buggies but they're also new not kind of cars that were back in the day if that makes any sense so uh, these three will be back on the show again soon as we're going to put them all head to head now you're getting a bit of a spoiler here because this one will be back on the show very soon so you're actually seeing it ahead of that video where I take it racing after painting it up and finishing it and putting all the electronics in it. But I wanted to put it in this video to group together with these other two. These are brilliant RCs. All of them are very good. Which one is the best one? Depends what you're doing with it. Also, I'm gonna put them around the track so we will find out which one is the best one around the track in the standard form. Personally, the ones that I like the look of the most is the Genova and the PR Racing one. The Kyosho Dirt Master is a bit lacklustre for me, even though I've upgraded all of this. It's all got all carbon composite from the RB5 on it, all RB5 parts fit into it. I don't know, I just think the other two are just better looking. But as for which one drives better, I honestly don't really know. Now, thanks to Jonas, he sent me a load of parts for my uh, GeForce Genova. So since you've last seen this on the show, I don't think I did another video. Maybe I did of updating the suspension, all the electronics. It now has the GeForce brushless system in it, brushless uh, ESC from Genova as well and the suspension and all the ball joints have been upgraded. So a massive thanks to Jonas for that, as those parts outside of Japan are quite expensive. Next is this little fella, the 15th anniversary dancing rider, speed delivery to celebrate the Tamiko 15th anniversary. This is a bit of a collaboration between Tamiya and Tamiko, where they take a kit from Tamiya, modify it a little bit, and then basically release it as a one in 333. So it's a limited edition kit. Really like it, massive fan of their 10th anniversary Porsche 934. So having this in the collection goes next to it, it's kind of nice. And then at some point when we get the 20th anniversary one, that'll be something a little bit more meatier, I think. Not sure what it'll be yet, we'll just have to wait and see. So it's nice that they've done this, it's good fun. Having a limited edition kit is really nice, especially if you're a new inbox collector and you like to collect the, the boxes and you like something a little bit rarer. So and I like what they did with the decals. It was very different. The rims are orange, uh, that's different. The body is the chrome one and then the decals make it very unique. Well, it was until Tamiko went and released the decal sheet for it. So you can basically fake one of these 
pretty easy. The body you can get from Tamiya, the orange rims are available, and now that the actual decals are sold by Tamiko, you can kind of fudge one, which kind of stings a little bit if you are a box collector. Yes, granted, if you've still got the box, it's still got the limited edition number on it, but if you want to get one of these and basically fake it yourself, well, you can, and that's obviously a bit of a shame for all the diehard fans that actually went out and grabbed one. But then I suppose the flip side of it, it's going to keep the kit prices down on it. So if you really like one of these, you will be able to make your own. So now we move on to a whole collection, a genre, if you will, that I started collecting, which was a really bad idea as it's really difficult to collect these in the UK. And that's these team associated vintage buggies. Now I did plan in my head, it made complete sense to collect from the JRX2 all the way up to the 22 2.0 where it changed to be cab forward. And that's where it stops for me. And I've kind of started, but being that it's so difficult in the UK to collect really good condition one of these, well, to be honest with you, it's quite difficult to find even ropey ones. I've got the tail end first. I haven't got the even harder to find ones that are even earlier. So the collection that I currently have now, it was a really stupid idea because I haven't even finished my team associated, again, vintage collection where I'm collecting from the RC10 gold pan all the way up to the B4. So I've still got to collect the B4. I've managed to get a B3. Anyway, you can see why I buy a collection and like to go from really early up to the point where the cab forward goes and then that's my collection. But I've almost finished team associated so that's where this came along anyway we kick off with one that i really was chuffed to get and that's this the triple x cr now it's beautiful this one it's gorgeous buggy i really like the the paint design that's box art also the body is really nice and this one is in mint condition super chuffed with that one now this came out in 2006 composite um chassis also come with titanium turnbuckles dual slipper clutch and full bearings and it is my pride and joy of the whole lot this not that easy to find it and it's all composite towers and it's in lovely condition so super chuffed to get that one also after that came the 22 now i managed to get both to 22 which is the 22 team car which is the all singing all dancing proper one and they did a ready to run which was a more cut down version so i managed to get both now these are not easy to get either but I managed to find the 22 with the original body in pretty decent condition that had done a reasonably low mileage, few little scuffs, but it was missing some of its electronics. Trying to find the correct original electronics was really difficult, but few of you had jumped out and helped me out. Someone found me the motor, someone found me the ESC, and I managed to put it back to stock. So I have all the correct electronics back in this, just like it was. So really happy with that. And the actual 22 team car is in lovely condition. It's uh, barely been used at all and it's complete. The body's been painted up, not in box art, but it's painted up really well, so I'm happy with that. Then after that came the 2.0 version, which is what we've got here, which is the one that came after. Now this has got a cab forward body, which is where I start to lose interest. It, this is not too bad, but then it gets silly after this, but this body is painted up so well, it's still really beautiful, so I kept it uh, as it is. Again, another one which is in really good condition. So I've managed to find four of the earlier team associated cars I still got a long way to go because I've got to go basically back from the triple X CR to the triple X the double X then you've got the JRX right at the other end so there's a lot still to be collected this one is going to take years to get especially in the UK but four beautiful cars that I'm super chuffed to have been able to put into the collection <sighs> things I do <laughs> Next, we move on to a very expensive, tiny little fella, and it's this from Traxxas, the TRX4M. This is the Defender one. Now, this was done in collaboration with Rochester RC, and I've upgraded the life out of this. We did a Yi Racing kind of upgrade as well. So it's got all metal links, beautiful bit of kit, and seriously expensive. It's got brass all round and a real performer probably the best little tiny mini crawler that I've got. And so it should be because the thing is worth an absolute fortune. Now I tend to drive it around on the tabletop every now and again, and I get out my ramps and stuff, but I really like it. But God, 
expensive, but there you go. I will keep this one in the collection, mainly because it's just so cool and it just handles so well. But when you're looking at easy one tenth prices, yeah, it can be a bit expensive and a very easy way to sink a lot of money into a tiny little crawler. Definitely needs a cab inside as well, just to raise that level. Also maybe painting it up instead of just having the red plastic. So you can go absolutely crazy with these. Now there is a good few versions of these out now and they've been really popular and uh, I can see why. Now, if you've been watching the show for a while, this is one that you'll be very familiar with. It's my sponsored Rochester RC, state-of-the-art two-wheel drive modern buggy. And this was one of the stars of the Noob Goes Racing. This is my current racing buggy for my modern two-wheel drive. It's all singing, all dancing. Uh, I've been slowly upgrading it and throwing more and more money at it. Also, it has some pretty serious electronics in it now as well, and pretty much as good as it gets. It's just my driving that's a problem. Now, the only thing I've done since the last video is I've tweaked the rear shocks. They're now inverted. Gonna try that this Friday and haven't done that before. The idea is to push the weight down lower. Whether it's gonna make any difference or not, I honestly don't know. And I've put a protective film on the bottom of this. I don't know if you can see that, just to make it look a bit more funky. Also, this chassis has been changed. This is the shorter wheelbase one because I race on such a tight track. So it's the D version, but I'm pretty sure I covered that in the last video for this one. What else is left to do? Well, there's one big upgrade I want to do on this one, and that is to do with the rear diff. Now, apparently you can fit an X-ray rear diff into this, which I'll probably do, but it's over a hundred pounds just for the rear diff. So it'll have to wait a little bit. I've got to put money into other stuff with all these new releases coming. But there we go. Oh, another thing that I've also done is I've managed to find someone who is making retro bodies for this car. So I've ordered one, it's coming. It's gonna be a few, oh, probably about two or three weeks before they ship it because they've only just released them. So I'm gonna make it retro. I covered this in a previous video, but that was trying to get a, another body to fit this car. These bodies are actually made for these. So that's gonna be really cool. So it shouldn't compromise the actual car itself or kind of cut it around to make it work. So that'll be really cool, but that'll be coming to the show. So you will see this car again. Also, uh, I'm gonna go and race it this Friday. So I'm looking forward to see how it performs. The diff is definitely something that I'm gonna to need to work on. I think I'm just gonna to have to pull the trigger and spend the money. Now the next one is one I've wanted for a long time and they're difficult to find in the UK in good condition and that's this, an early Traxxas Bandit. Now I would like to get a few more Traxxas vintage ones, the TRX I think it was, a TRX 1. One of those would be really nice but they're really hard to get in good condition so I might try and hunt one of them down at one point. But this was another car that I really wanted to get hold of. This is a ready to run bandit that came out. Now these started being produced in 1995, but I'm pretty sure this is a slightly later one because I was told that the early ones were a kit form and the bodies were clear. Then later on they did the bodies like this. So there's about four colors like this different versions so this is a slightly later one and i tried to find out what date they changed to the more modern version that you still see now but i couldn't really find much there's not a massive amount about the history of the older cars from traxxas i guess being that they were ready to run back then they just didn't have that kind of following like kits did i'm guessing there's just not a big sort of central location of knowledge of when it was released, what you got, different versions like there is for, with Tamiya or Kershaw for instance. This one is in a lovely condition and it's got all the original electronics and it's a runner. It's been on the show, I've, I've driven it on the show and everything. The only thing that's done, I've done differently, can't remember if I did it in the video or not, is I managed to get hold of tires front and rear, so it's got brand new tires on it, as obviously I drove it. One thing that I really like about Traxxas, they tend to bring out their kits for a long time. And the new version of the Bandit isn't massively different either, really, so you can still pick up certain parts. So even though this was originally released all the way back in 1995, it's not impossible to get hold of parts, like tires, for instance, whereas trying to get hold of vintage tires for other manufacturers is impossible. And they weren't expensive either. So there you go, that's my Traxxas Bandit. At some point, I wanna get the latest one, um, just to give it a bit of a bash. They are fun to drive. I wouldn't say they're amazing <laughs> uh, if you took it to the track, but they do okay. 
Now the next car needs no introduction whatsoever and played a big part at RC Kicks in 2023 and it's this, the Cougar Classic. Project 34 is the actual name of it for the whole thing but really it's become known as the Trigger's Broom because I've changed literally everything on this car. There is so many parts that have been replaced I can pretty much build another Cougar using what's left over from this car. I'm trying to think off the top of my head while I talk to you of what's actually left. The drive shafts and the steering knuckles. I think that's the only two things left. I actually will change the front steering knuckles as well. So it basically leaves a set of rear drive shafts. Pretty much everything else has been modified or changed. Oh, one more thing that hasn't changed, this back bumper for the motor. Apart from that, nearly everything. From the wheels, to the arms, to the suspension, to the towers, to the motor mount, to the gearbox surround, to the carbon sides, to the whole diff itself, the tower at the rear, the main bulkhead is from a Cougar 2, the hubs are from a Cougar 2, uh, so as you can imagine, yeah, quite a lot. It's a Cougar 2 body as well, full race electronics in it, and this has been on the show tons of times, and I love this buggy. I was offered about £1,300 for this buggy, and I turned them down as I don't think I could actually reproduce this. There's some parts on this that were made for me, like the alloy steering, and also I was gifted some very rare parts, like the gearbox uh, housing, that's in aluminium so I kind of decided that I couldn't replace it and I've done so much with this one and it's become quite a well-known car that I will definitely keep it in the collection. Now the next one is a bit of a highlight for me for 2023. I had a Nova Fox in 2022 and 2021. I think I've actually had two Nova Foxes back to back and then I've sold them on. Was I've always wanted to have a Fox and I was lucky enough to get this, a vintage one that was actually in really good condition. I restored it on the show. It has an original body with original decals and I replaced a few broken parts and put it all back together again and it's now fantastic. One thing that really grabbed me versus the Nova Fox is just how different the Fox is to the Nova Fox. It's not an easy restoration as some of the parts that you need to get hold of the Nova Fox never had. When Tamiya actually re-released the Nova Fox they fixed quite a few issues with the Fox. So all the steering is very different for instance so finding these parts was really difficult. Well it was but you lot helped me out. A few of you got in contact and had the parts that I needed to restore this one. So super chuffed are all proper decals. The body is all original. Uh, all the electronics are original. It's got the mechanical speed controller in it and, and all the servos are all vintage as well. So beautiful one to have. Another thing that was really nice was I actually created my late father's body that he had on a Fox a long time ago. And I'm pretty sure that's exactly how it was. So it was nice to do that on the show as well. Um, he did have black wheels. I've got them around somewhere, but I've changed it back to a Fox for now. So uh, it was another nice one to have. And that really does remind me of what his car was like. So there you go, a Fox. And last but not least is a classic, saved one of the best to last. It's this, it's the Marui Ninja. One of the best looking RC vintage cars that were ever made and this one was gifted to RC Kicks by Sven in 2023 and it's actually in pretty decent condition there is a few things I need to do to this car I need to find new tires they have cracked on the uh, inside now I have put some oil on them to soften them up and they've actually come up quite well so I don't think they're going to crack anymore I've got the driver set to put in it as well. Uh, whether I'll actually do a full strip down and rebuild on this one, I guess it depends on how busy I get. It's not that bad. I may do a new body set as well, just to get it super sharp and super fresh, as it would be nice to get this one looking really, really spiffy. Now, I think that pretty much covers everything for 2023. There was a few RTRs and smaller stuff that kind of came and went. And uh, I think I've got some other the Tamiya's as well like the track up there that one came in 2023 but this video is already pushing 50 odd minutes so I don't want to just keep going on and on and on otherwise I'll never get this video out but since you stayed all the way to the end here's a little thing for you this is coming on the show real soon it just arrived from Rochester RC today 
the squash fan. So I'm gonna do a detailed build of this really soon. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed 2023. Loads more builds coming in 2024. I did a poll of what you'd like to see more of in 2024, and 63% of you basically wanna see more detailed builds. So I hear you, and that's what I'm gonna do. So we've got a lot of big cars coming soon. The Kyosho, the Team Associated RC10CC, the Yokomo, the Yokomo Dogfighter, that's coming as well so i'll do real detailed builds on those and hopefully you will like it and uh, maybe we'll get a few more views as we go into 2024 well it's an exciting time see you in the next one bye bye